Welcome to Real Estate School. Today, we hope to simplify mortgage amortization for you. Amortization is a partial or complete reduction of a loan's principal balance over the loan term achieved by periodic payments which include principal as well as interest. Let's break that down even further. Principal is defined as the loan balance to which interest charges are applied, basically the amount that is loaned. Interest is a lender's charge for the use of the principal amount of the loan. With every payment made, a portion of the payment is applied to the reduction of the principal and another portion is applied to the interest on the loan. A fully amortized loan is a loan that has been completely paid off at the end of the loan term. Negative amortization is a financial term referring to an increase in the principal balance of a loan caused by a failure to cover the interest due on that loan. For example, if the interest payment on the loan is $500 and the borrower only pays $400, then the $100 difference would be added to the loan's principal balance, thereby creating negative amortization. To determine monthly payments on a fixed payment amortized loan, amortization payment tables can be used. Let's discuss how to determine principal interest taxes and insurance, basically your monthly mortgage payment, using an amortization table or sometimes amortization schedule. Your monthly mortgage payment is made up of four components, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, P-I-T-I. -I. Principal and interest is the P and the first I. That is, as we discussed earlier, the amount we're paying the bank back for loaning us the money to purchase the home. Next, we have the T part of the PITI, taxes. That is the monthly amount that is placed in an escrow account to pay real estate taxes when they become due. One twelfth of the estimated tax payment will be placed in the escrow account every month. The same for your homeowner's insurance, the I of the PITI. One twelfth of your estimated annual insurance goes into your escrow account in order to pay your annual insurance premium when they become due. The escrow account is an account set up by your lender where the money accumulates every month when you make your mortgage payments so when your annual taxes and insurance premium is due, the money is there for those payments. Let's discuss what you're going to see on an amortization table. You have columns of information here. The three columns on the right represent the time period on which you can take out a loan. And to the left, you'll see the mortgage rate. So you would take the time frame in which you would be paying off the loan and what the interest rate is. And based on this, this would be your monthly payment over the time period for every thousand dollars of a loan that you take out. On your real estate exam, you may be asked this type of question. What is the amortization rate for $1,000 at 6% interest for a 30-year mortgage? You can look it up in the table and you'll discover that the factor is $6 per month. That factor is the amount of money it takes per month to pay off principal and interest on a thousand dollar loan over a period of 30 years. Now taking it further, what if you're asked what is the monthly payment on an amortized fixed rate loan of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars at six percent interest for 30 years? First we take the one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and drop the three zeros. Why do we drop the three zeros? Because, remember, the table represents principal and interest per $1,000 borrowed. 
I tell my students to remember it this way. Always take all of the numbers in front of the last comma in the amount that is borrowed and use that number. For instance, if you borrowed $1,580,384, you would use 1580 In our practice problem, we will be using 150 Multiply the 150 times our factor, which we found was to be 6, and you will get $900. The 900 from the equation is the monthly payment, principal and interest, it takes to amortize a fixed rate loan of $150,000 at 6% for 30 years. Let's look at a sample question you may see on your exam. Melissa purchases a home for $100,000. Melissa's putting 10% down and her interest rate is 4%. Her term of the loan is 30 years. And your real estate taxes are $2,400 and insurance is $1,200 per year. What is Melissa's PITI? The first step is to determine the actual amount borrowed. Remember, the PITI is calculated on the amount borrowed and not the purchase price. Melissa put a 10% down payment down. A $100,000 purchase price times 10% or 0 0.10 equals a down payment of $10,000. $100,000 purchase price minus the down payment of $10,000 equals a finance amount of $90,000. Let's find the loan factor 4% APR for 30 year term and determine the principal and interest. 4.77 With a $90,000 loan amount, we drop the three zeros. 90 times 4.77 equals $429.30. Principal and interest. With some real estate exam questions, they may just ask for the principal and interest. In that case, you would be done. However, in this question, they did ask for the PITI, so we will continue. The annual real estate taxes are $2,400. So we need to find the monthly tax rate by dividing by 12. 2400 divided by 12 equals 200. Homeowner's insurance is 1200 per year. To find that monthly amount, we'll divide 1200 by 12 to determine the monthly insurance amount is $100. $429.30 principal and interest, $200 for taxes and $100 for insurance equals a total PITI of $729.30. Let's try another question based on the amortization schedule. What is the maximum loan amount a buyer can take out if they can only afford $1,200 per month and have been approved for a 20-year loan at 4%? Round your answer to the nearest $100. Let's start by going back and looking at our table. We will first start with the 20 years at 4%. Cross-checking the schedule, we see the payment per $1,000 borrowed is $6.06. We would then divide the amount they can afford per month, $1,200, by the $6.06. In other words, how many of those $6.06 would fit into that $1,200? $1,200 divided by 6.06 .06 equals 198 with a lot of decimal points. But we're going to leave those. And then multiply that number by 1,000. After rounding to the nearest $100, the answer would be $198,000. Okay, moving on. How to find the monthly payment when you're given a mortgage factor? You borrow $125,000 for 20 years at an interest rate of 7%. The mortgage factor is $7.75. What is the monthly payment necessary to amortize this loan? $125,000 loan amount 
divided by the thousand dollars equals 125. 125 times 7.75 equals $968.75. Remember that the mortgage factor is the amount of money needed on a monthly basis to amortize a $1,000 loan at a given interest rate over a given period of time. In this example, $7.75 is the amount needed to pay off a $1,000 loan at 7% for 20 years. But because you're borrowing $125,000, you have to divide by 1,000 to find out how many units of 1,000 are in that loan amount. Multiplying this amount by the factor gives you the answer. Now, Let's look at another amortization question you may find on your exam not utilizing the amortization schedule. You borrow $130,000 for 25 years at 7.5% interest in an amortized loan with a monthly payment of $959.40. How much interest do you pay in the first month of the loan? What we're going to do here is draw it out. A memory tip I've heard is to think about a pip sandwich. Our pip sandwich consists of two slices of bread, the beginning balance and the ending balance. The beginning balance is the balance before the monthly payment has been made. The bottom slice of bread is the balance after the payment has been applied. In between our two slices of bread, we have the PIP. Monthly payment, interest rate of the loan, and the amount of the monthly payment that will apply to the principal. You can remember the second P is principal because R comes after A. Let's apply the data that we know to our PIP sandwich. The top slice of bread, the beginning loan balance, is $130,000. The monthly payment is $959.40, although we won't be using that in this first equation. And the interest rate on the loan is 7.5%. Again, the question was, how much interest do you pay in the first month of the loan? To determine this, we're going to take our original loan balance, the $130,000, times the interest rate, which is 7.5%. Or we can express it as 0.075. $130,000 times 7.5% equals $9,750. That would be the interest for one year. If you made no principal payments during that first year, you would have paid the lender $9,750 in interest. However, we're trying to determine monthly interest this month. So we take the yearly amount of interest, $9,750, divided by 12 months, and that answers our first question. The first month's interest on the loan is $812.50. The next question is, how much of the principal do you owe after you've made the first payment? Well, we've learned so far that the uh, monthly payment was $959.40, and we know the first month's interest is $812.50. If we subtract those two, we have now learned the bottom P, um, Principal, $146.90 applied to the loan balance this month, leaving us a final loan balance of $129,853.10 principal owed after the first month's payment. This number becomes the top slice of bread for the next month. And the same process continues. One final question that you could see on your exam. How to find the total interest on the loan? 
And when you first see this question, you're shocked. How many calculations is it going to take to determine this? You borrow $100,000 for 30 years at 8% interest. It's an amortized loan and your monthly payments are $734. How much interest will you pay over the life of the loan? Wow. Well, in reality, it's really not that difficult. A 30-year loan consists of a total of 360 payments, 12 payments a year for 30 years, $734 per month times 360 payments means you're going to pay back over the life of the loan $264,240. If we subtract from that, the original principal amount borrowed, $100,000, equals $164,240 interest that was paid over the life of this loan. This is assuming that you don't make any payments ahead of schedule. You make all 360 payments on time the first of the month. Thank you for watching our video. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit that bell below. That way we can notify you when our next video is going to be released. Thank you.